Hello my blessed ones, I'm back here with another video as promised and let's get straight into it. Today we're going to talk about having a fresh start and having a new perspective on who God is. A lot of people don't even know who God is and what God wants for you, okay? God wants better for you, but a lot of people don't know that. They don't understand that because they look at God in a way that's not true. So let's get straight into it, okay? This is a word for a fresh start and that the Holy Spirit has given us to have a chance to receive our promise, a chance to get the things that our heart desires. How many of us is in a season of wearies? Okay, you know, weary, to become weary is to become tired. And how many of us is just tired? Like, we're just tired of everything. Okay, a season of weariness where we feel like God is not honoring our prayers. He's not inclining his ears to us or our prayers. We are one step away from giving up. We are one step away from believing that God is not even real. Okay, how many of you guys are in that season? I know a lot of you might be in that season. And I know because you feel like you've been waiting a long time. You feel like for this thing that God has promised you, it's not coming to pass. <laughs> he's allowed you to go through trials and tribulations and you're feeling like he's not there, period. You're feeling like, well, if there is a God, then why would he allow his child to go through that? You know, go through all of these things that I'm going through, right? So that's why we're going to be talking about who God is. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. How you feel and how you should be feeling and how you look at God and how you should be looking at God. So we're going to receive a fresh start in our minds. We're going to receive a fresh start in our lives, okay? So that we can gain new perspective about how God works and what he's already done for us because god is good you know you guys may hear that all the time god is good god is good god is not bad the devil is bad you know this world is bad so i have notes for you guys and i need everybody to understand how good god is i need everyone to understand what he's already done for us so how many of us know the definition of unconditional love Okay. Can anybody tell me what the definition of unconditional love is? The message today is going to be precise and straight to the point. It's going to be refreshing. And I think a lot of us need a refresh. You know, we see what God is doing in other people's lives. And we're like, hello, God, what about me? So God is unconditional love. That's what unconditional love is. Agape love. Agape is a term referring to unconditional love, the highest form of love, charity, the love of God for man and of man for God. So unconditional love is known as affection without limitations. How many of us know that God loves us without any limitations? Did you know that God loves you without any limitations? No matter what, all of his children. How many of us know that? How many of us know that God has unconditional love for us no matter what we do? God's love is unconditional. He's unconditional love for sure. How many of us put conditions on our love for the Holy Spirit? So we put conditions on our love for the Holy Spirit because he doesn't come through when we want him to. For those who don't know the difference between conditional and unconditional love, just know that unconditional love is God's love. And conditional love is when someone loves us conditionally, it means that they put terms and restrictions or rules on the giving of their love. So while a person can have feelings or deep care or affection for you, their love is conditional if it feels like you have to earn it. Additionally, conditional love vanishes during difficult times. Sound familiar? You ever been in love with somebody, but as soon as it get hard, you gone? Or as soon as it get hard, they're gone? Yeah, that's called conditional love. It's not called unconditional love. And that's not what unconditional love is. God's love is unconditional. God will never forsake you. He's never going to just be gone just because of how you act. So, 
So when the Holy Spirit doesn't do what we think he promised us or what we expected him to do, how many of us have conditional love for the Holy Spirit? Hmm. Well, God, if you don't do this, then you know what? I'm going to take matter into my own hands. I'm not waiting on you no more. I don't even know if you're real, God. Because I don't feel you. I don't see you anywhere in my life. I'm down here struggling. Why me, God? Why am I going through all these things? How many of you are putting conditions on the love of God? So right now in this season, okay, I know that this walk is not easy at all. We're going to have moments where we want to question God, right? We're going to have moments where we may question our belief system, like, and what we believe in, in, what we've been believing in all this time, because we don't see what the word says showing up in our lives, you know? But let me tell you, the promise of God has already come to pass. Let me repeat that. The promise of God has already come to pass. You want to know what the ultimate promise is that God has already performed in our life? Do you really want to know? Do you really want to know what God has already performed in our life and what the ultimate promise is? Okay. He sent his son. He sent his son to die for us so that we could have life eternally. Okay, he did not promise us that we were going to get everything that we wanted while we were here on earth. He did not promise us that we weren't going to experience any trials and tribulations. He did not promise us that we were going to have a life without pain, without hurt, okay, or without struggle. He did not say that in that in his word. He did not say that. The promise of God that everybody is waiting on has already come to pass. It has already came. period, through Jesus Christ. We are able to live through Jesus Christ. He has given us a fresh start through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we are able to do wrong and then turn away from that wrong and be forgiven for our sins. You could do wrong and ask for forgiveness and boom. And yeah, you're going to have to work after that to show God that you're really serious so that he could do works in your life but he's not going to just leave you like how people with conditional love do or how we have conditional love on the Holy Spirit he's not just going to ghost you okay so you could turn away from your, that wrong and be for, for, forgiven for your sins just like that true life is him sending Jesus Christ so that we don't have to experience the consequences of sin okay how many of us know that, that that is the promise? He is already performing that for us daily. So whatever it is, the material things, the worldly things that you are waiting on God to perform in your life, it's not important. He's already done enough. How many of us can rest in the Lord and appreciate what he's already done for us? What he's already shown us through his supernatural power? Okay, so if you're experiencing a moment where you're feeling defeated or you're feeling betrayed by God, don't feel like that. You know, because you don't like how your life looks right now. You don't like, you know, that he may have taken a loved one from you. I understand. They believed in God and you don't understand why he didn't show up for them and why he didn't keep them. So he did not promise us eternal life here. He didn't promise us eternal life here. We all have a day and a time where we are going to leave this earth. To stay here on earth is not the goal. So I want you guys to be really clear on that. He didn't promise us eternal life on earth. We all have a day to die and we all know that. As scary as it is, we all have a day to die here on earth. You know, and to stay here on earth is not the goal. The goal is to be with the Father. That is where Jesus Christ is on his throne, ruling over the universe. So the goal is not to stay here and be riding around in our Bentleys and Benzes, because I got a Benz, and staying in our homes that we have. That's not the goal. God has prepared a place for us in heaven with him, okay? So let's change our perspective. Let's do a perspective shift on who God is, okay? 
God is almighty. God is all-knowing. Some things that we pray for, we are out of alignment with God. And sometimes he strips us of things that we thought that we wanted and we thought that we needed. That is detrimental to our salvation. So sometimes he has to take things from us. We may not understand, okay, why it's not working out right. Because he has a hope in the future for you. And the decision that you have made and the path that you have taken on your life, good or bad, it could be good or bad. It's just the path that you chose to take. Sometimes it could be a good thing that he takes from you because he has something better. So it doesn't have to necessarily be bad. It could be like a very good idea. It could be something that you dropped everything else for it to do. If it's not what God wants for you, it's not going to happen. And nine times out of ten, what you're thinking is good is not even good because God has something better. So just allow God to give you the something better. Okay? You may think you are happy and you have something where you are. and But God has something better, baby, than what it is that you were getting ready to settle for. Sometimes we don't even know what we are settling for. And it's like, even with relationships, people thought that they couldn't get over this one guy or this one girl. And after they got over them, they're like, wow, what was I thinking? I don't know. But God knows what is better for you. God knows what he wants for you. God knows why you're here and everything. And you know, we are here on earth to do God's will. Yeah, we live and have a little fun, but it's still to do God's will. It's something for God that we have to do. This is God's world. And they could say it's the devil's world or whatever. No, the devil then took over, but it's still God's land. Okay, so... Allow him to release you of the things that you think that you need and thought that you wanted so he can give you better. Sometimes he doesn't give you what you're praying for because he has something better, okay? Can somebody say better? Can somebody say, God, give me better. Release me of the desires of my heart. Mm. And give me what you have in mind for me so that I can have better. Release me of the desires of my heart. And give me what you have in mind for me so that I can have better, God. Amen. So that I can live the best life that I can possibly live down here on earth while I'm here. Okay? God promised to give us a life of abundance and prosperity. For those who are following his commandments. Period. I'm not trying to be... Oh, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm better than you because I believe in God. Everyone should be believing in God. And we shouldn't be competing to believe in God. That should just be law. So if I'm following the commandments of God, why wouldn't God bless me? Think about it. So when people are judging people who are seeking after God, oh, you just doing this because of that? Oh, you just... Uh, I mean, it is what it is. Some people are doing things because of... but. Come on now. If you're just doing what you're supposed to do, it should be no problem. And God just wants better for you. Hello. Everybody should be happy that God just wants better for all of us. So, for those who are believing in him, don't be mad at God. Just continue to believe in God. Don't be mad at God. Because the rapper Remy Ma, she had an interview um, recently and she said that she was mad at God when she went to jail. And we all say those things. Not me, because I've always been afraid to say that I was mad at God. But it's just crazy because when people fix their mouth to say that, I'm not judging her. It's just, you know, the devil just in our minds saying things like that. I'm mad at God. Because if we only knew, there's no reason to be mad at God for anything because if it's in the word that God wants better for you and if it's in the word that God has eternal life for you and if it's in the word that God has given you uh, um, abundance and prosperity to live that life and if it's in the word that God has everything for you you lack nothing why would you be mad at God just think about the things that you do first and what perspective you have on God before you speak and, you know, use your tongue to say that you're mad at God. 
you know, for we not know what we do. We make mistakes. We say things that we don't mean all the time. Just like God says that we pray for things and want things that is not in our best interest. God is trying to help you. So have a better perspective on God, okay? You know, because he is planning to give you better than what you thought you wanted. And later on, it will make sense. It may not make sense now, but guess what? God doesn't think like us. God does not think like us. So stay encouraged and change your perspective on God and know that he wants nothing but the best for you. See you later. Love you.